Hello and welcome to Vox Markets. I am John Human, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Max Brewers, Chief Business Development Officer at GTEC. How are you doing, Max? Hi, yeah, very nice to meet you and great to be on the Vox Market Show. No, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Um, so we're going to talk specifically today uh, about carbon capture and storage, which is a, a growing area for GTEC. But perhaps before we start, um, if you could introduce GTEC at a high level for the benefit of our viewers, that would be great. Yeah, so uh, GTEC is a geoenergy and green hydrogen company dedicated to the energy transition. Yeah, absolutely. Part of the uh, the transition, uh, which is which is gathering pace. And um, as we've alluded to, carbon capture and storage is uh, is a very important part of that transition potential. It's one which the UK government uh, last week in its budget has uh, has officially committed massive funding to. I think they're talking twenty billion pounds over the next two decades. Is this representative of of uh, you know this this sort of game changing nature of this technology? And is this sort of level of funding a game changer in itself for its deployment? Yeah, I think it's a very significant step forward. I was last week at uh, Sarah Week, and we really saw there that uh, CCS is at an inflection point. Uh, however, the scale and the speed at which CCS will take take off will depend on further actions from governments. Will they be setting the right policies and the right kind of uh, incentives? And again, I think this is a good move. And of course, we should also consider that the UK has set a CO2 price of around £83, which makes uh, quite a few uh, CCS projects now uh, competitive. And again, that, that's certainly going to uh, help increase. Um, I think we also further need to take into account that £83 sounds maybe like a high number, but if we look at some of the studies on the actual bottom line impact of such uh, a price, that we see that, for example, uh, one of those studies on the cost of a bridge, it's only a 1% increase for the end user, but at the same time, it reduces 51% of the CO2 um, uh, emissions. So these kind of steps really help, and I do believe that we're seeing that point where CCS is going to take off uh, significantly. Mm. Um, so, so how much do we need? Um, you know, there's a big, big energy transition to go. Uh, as we shift away from uh, from the hydrocarbon economy to uh, to, to to cleaner power, how, how much do we need to scale from where we are today? Yeah, and that is quite a lot. And if we look at it globally, we need to capture around 4 billion tons of CO2 by 2035 if we want to meet that 1.5 degree target. And just to put that 4 billion tons a little bit on in context, at this moment in time, per annum, the world produces around... 4.2 billion tons of uh, crude oil. So we need, at least in weight sense, something of similar kind of scale, and clearly that's that's massive. If we look then at the UK targets, the UK has set a goal of um, storing around 20 to 30 million tons per annum, which of course is only 0.5% of that 4 billion. But then again, if we look at the UK's uh, GDP as part of the world's GDP, we see that's around 2% or so. So even the UK goal is, uh, again, a good step in that direction to getting to that uh, 4 billion tons uh, stored per annum uh, globally. Mm. So so if, if the UK is uh, targeting 30 million tons and investing 20 billion, it, it, it sounds like there's a lot of money that needs to come from somewhere. How much are we going to have to invest and where is it likely to come from? Yeah, the investment required is clearly very large. So again, to get at 4 billion tons globally, we need to uh, invest, uh, again, globally around 1.2 uh, billion trillion US dollars, uh, even taking into account learning curves, etc. But an important point to make here is that it's not all government money. I think in many cases, actually, companies will benefit from taking the the rain in their own hands and making these investments. What we need from the government is the right kind of um, um, direction being set, the right kind of uh, uh, framework, and then uh, industry will take this on. And maybe to further build on that, industry will be looking at a variety of different kinds of solutions. They have their own uh, net zero targets, uh, many of the companies, and they will be looking at CCS as part of that solution, but they also will be looking at different type of solutions. Think about geothermal or green hydrogen or wind and solar in order to get to, to net zero. And actually, we at GTEC have started offering such a kind of integrated decarbonization solution for companies. So we can find specific solutions for each company 
uh, on, on specific needs, either at global studies or maybe more specific feasibility studies for a particular site. And maybe one more uh, element to this, because I think that is important. We talk quite a lot about CCS, in particular in the UK context, about massive hub scale projects. But what I expect we will see is next to that also much more local solutions where you can start thinking about storing CO2 maybe at a location or very close to where actually that point source emission is. So again, that's a way in which I see the CCS market taking off uh, in the coming years. Mm. So, so what are you what are you doing specifically in this? I guess presumably there's some commerciality that means you can't you can't tell us everything. But 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 what what sort of what sort of projects are you working on at the moment? Yeah, it's a variety of projects, and indeed I can't go go into details of what is all exactly to come. But what I can maybe talk a little about, but what we have been doing, and uh, GTEC uh, uses its decades of subsurface uh, knowledge. We have a world leading uh, subsurface database. We have a digital twin of the earth, uh, if you like, which we call GLOBE, and the geospatial capabilities, which we have honed, uh, and we are now uh, repurposing into uh, the CCS realm. And as an example of the type of work which we already have done, we uh, worked for the UK government for the North Sea Transition Authority with regards to prepare, finding the right uh, areas for CO2 storage in preparation for the first bid round, which was uh, launched uh, last year, where 13 uh, areas were on offer, 24, uh, 26 actually uh, got offers, and we expect the results of that uh, to be announced uh, soon. And of course, we look forward to work with the UK government, as well as other governments, in uh, further uh, CCS bid rounds. Mm, indeed, it's not just the UK where uh, where these kind of investments are being prioritised. Uh, absolutely. We see it everywhere in the world, and many governments making now moves in the right kind of direction to stimulate uh, carbon capture and storage. Mm, no, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, but one thing I have to ask, um, I mean, this is a new technology. Is it safe? Yes, it is safe. And actually, it is not a new technology. Uh, CO2 storage has already been happening around the globe uh, in uh, geological reservoirs for decades, 40, 50 years. This has been on, uh, ongoing. Uh, but to give further credence that is a safe, actually, the UK Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy recently had a set of uh, independent experts conduct a study specifically into the risk associated with CO2 leakage. Uh, in this study, 25 years of injection and 100 years of monitoring uh, was, uh, if you like, modeled. And the conclusion of that is that there's a high level of confidence in long-term security of CO2 containment. More than 99.9% .9 of the CO2 will be uh, re retained in that store. That was the conclusion of this particular study, and it is actually uh, the same as prior studies uh, which have been done internationally, all pointing to the same kind of thing, CO2 storage is safe. But having said that, it is important that you choose the right locations. You can't just store it anywhere. And if you want to summarize uh, carbon storage, the three things really important, make sure that you have sufficient storage capacity, that you have the injectivity, i.e. you can actually get the CO2 down there in sufficient uh, rates. And last but certainly not least, it's the containment. And finding the best geological formations is not directly straightforward, as it seems. But again, we at GTEC, we're dedicated to find these best locations for, for storage uh, by looking at porosity, permeab permeability, uh, cap rock, and uh, in that way, really trying to find the, the spaces the locations uh, where CO two can be stored safely for many many decades to come. Mm, no, it's it's um it's a very interesting transition. I presume you know your many decades of experience in 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 one industry, the 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 one of the past, is going to reap huge dividends as you move into to, to this new future of renewable energy. Absolutely, I'm really pleased that we can actually bring that expertise to bear in this very exciting and very necessary new development which we're seeing all around the globe. Mm, and I expect uh, lots of news flow to come as well then. I hope to share that with you in the not too distant future. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Um, thank you very much, Max. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and uh, really interesting insights into to what's going to be, as, as you say, a critical technology for, uh, for the energy transition. Thank you very much. Likewise. Thank you.